Vlad here with AVT Astro. So today I'm starting a pretty cool project and that is moving my current observatory from my old house to the new house. So um, I already kind of started uh, this thing out uh, a few nights ago and let me show you the progress of where I'm at. All right, so if you're, you know, planning on, you know, putting up an observatory, just a couple of things to kind of consider. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, I live in an HOA, right? So you want to get your HOAs, you know, like guidelines and that type of deal, you know, submit the request to put up, you know. I, I wear it as a shed. We have a pretty small HOA. Um, you know, I did tell them that it's actually going to be an observatory with a slide off roof. But essentially, you're putting up a shed is what, you know, what you want to tell them. Uh, you know, make sure that it meets like all the requirements and that type of deal. Make sure you get the approval before you do it. Um, like I wanted to put it, you know, just kind of like one thing that I had to go through with my HOA. I wanted to put it, you know, like kind of like where the tripod is roughly right now, right? But the very closest the regulations allow me to do is 50 feet away from the center of the street and 15 feet from the other lot, right? So this is the closest that I could, you know, like essentially put it to that corner of my lot, you know, where the grass is anyway. Um, after like kind of playing around with it, I decided that essentially where that black dot is, right, is where the uh, pier is going to be, which I'm about to start digging the hole for actually right now. Um, you know, a couple of other things. So, you know, you want to make sure that you mark where uh, true north is because, you know, you want to align your observatory with the pier, you know, to, to, to true north as well. So I did that these black marks right here actually are uh, what i marked with the laser after a couple of attempts with just like manually doing i just kind of wasn't really satisfied with that these black little circles are you know laser essentially uh guided for me to like put it on and then like these corners here that one that one that one and that one's basically roughly where the building's gonna go uh, the first thing you want to do though when you're starting to you know put up an observatory you want to uh, Basically make the hole for where you're gonna put your concrete uh, for the pier and then you know uh, Later on uh, I'll show you guys kind of how I've done it before with the previous observatory it worked pretty well So I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing with a little bit more reinforcement um, But anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna get to digging the hole. I'll see you guys in a bit All right guys, so Quick update for you. So I'm a lot more tired and a lot more sweaty, but <laughs> basically, so here's what I got going on. So I dug out the hole for the pier. Um, you know, I, I did some research on this online and people say that you should put, you know, like roughly five to 10 times the amount of concrete and weight as what you're planning in your, you know, scope setup plus mount to be or whatever. Um, you know, last time I was working with ground, like this, especially first part of the, you know, second, like probably the first six inches were really hard here. The bottom was a little bit softer, so this is pretty hard ground, so I'm not too worried about it. I think this will do me just fine. I'm probably, I don't know, let's, let me show you how far deep I am above ground. So, about that far, probably about three feet deep by... I don't know, a couple of feet. Last time I used a hole this big, it worked just fine. Um, I, I will say this, you know, last time since I did have softer ground, um, I initially made like the pure setup for a lighter scope for like an 8 inch SCT. Then I ended up using a 12 inch with a pretty heavy mount and pretty heavy load. That was probably like a couple hundred pounds. So, and I did, you know, and I did a polar alignment and that swing from one part of the sky to the other part of the sky. Like, I think it did affect my polar alignment a little bit, just having that slight shift in the weight, you know. So I would say, you know, don't undersize this. You know, if anything, you know, you should oversize this. Um, you know, I think I'm going to do some uh, rough calculations of how much concrete's currently going to go in there. Um, I, you know, I've got currently 10 bags of 60 pounds, uh, you know, 10 60 pound bags of concrete. Um, which, you know, should be fine for my soil conditions. Again, if you're like in sandy soil, really soft soil, you probably want more than that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see if, you know, if the 10 bags will do me. If I need to buy more bags to fill this, you know, I will. Um, and then in a bit, I'll kind of show you, you know, basically how I'm going to put the anchoring bolts in there before, you know, start pouring concrete. All right, all right, guys. So we got our, you know, like base planned out where we're putting the observatory. 
Got the whole dugout for, you know, the pier, which is this the pier that I'm using. I actually had my dad's friend make this for me. He's been a lifetime welder, uh, so it's kind of like, you know, has a special part or place in my heart. Kind of a quick interesting story. Um, you know, when I was a little kid, probably like four or five years old, like I had like a little, uh, you know, puddle car in Russia. Uh, I'm originally from Russia and uh, he was like the guy that you know kind of fixed it up for me and helped me with it and you know like years and years later you know he kind of welded this thing for me uh, so you know pretty cool uh, but yeah so what you want to do at this point is so you want to take whatever anchor bolts they are using I just bought these at Home Depot these are just like you know base school LJ anchor bolts I'll probably have a link in you know uh, in the description to you know the, what I use but any anchor bolt will work and essentially what we're doing is we're using a piece of plywood, right? So we're going to make a template. I'm going to drill holes in here for uh, for basically bolting these in. And we're going to put these into the ground, you know, along with this guy. So that that way we have a perfect template for, you know, the base of your pier, essentially. So the first step is to get a drill bit, right? That we're going to drill in the plywood that matches, you know, these holes that you have in your in the bottom of your pier. Um, so yeah, just get one that's, you know, the closest to whatever you got. Probably a little bit bigger won't hurt in it. I mean, you definitely don't want it too big because then, you know, you're going to have too much play and they might not match up your pier later. So yeah, this is a half inch and I think this is you know pretty much exactly what i've got going on here so i'll just use that um and then yeah so as far as doing this you know pretty you know it's pretty simple there's nothing too much to it so what i'm gonna do right is i'm gonna put this on the ground the plywood the piece of plywood there and then i'm just gonna stand up my pier you know directly on there right Just like so. You know, just center it up, you know, relatively well. And then, yeah, you just drill holes in there. That's all there is to it. Oopsies. this down so that it doesn't hurt nobody this thing is pretty heavy um and yeah there she is perfect template for you to you know put these guys into you know since what you do is you put these in right well first you put a bolt on and then you put these in like so So yeah, and then there you go, you got a perfect little template. Now I'm going to uh, put all four of these in and I'm going to make like a little thin of rebar down here as well to kind of you know, help reinforce them once all concreted down. So once I do that, I'll restart the video and kind of show you what I've got as a finished part of the product. Alright ladies and germs, so here's what I've got going on. This is the template that we made, you know, again from the pure base that you're going to be mounting to that. Um, you know, I just put the bolts in, bolted them down. Uh, last time that I put this pier in, I didn't even have rebar. This time I read about it and people say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of rebar, you know, um, kind of essential. All as I have it is just kind of, you know, wound up with a little bit of wire to here so it's not like welded on or anything. I'm not a structural engineer, apparently smarter people in this subject than me say that this does make a difference, it does work, you know, just kind of having a, 
kind of wire to it because I guess you know once you pour the concrete this all just becomes one solid piece you know you don't really got to make this pretty you know once this goes in the concrete and over no one will ever see it again right so anyhow I'll see you guys in a bit and we'll kind of you know start pouring concrete and placing it I don't think I'm gonna get to it today probably do it on a different day because you know uh, my kids are going to the fair pretty soon so I gotta get ready for that uh, but anyway yeah I'm kind of glad with the progress that I made today see you guys next time All right guys, so as you can see probably by my hair more than anything else, it's actually been a little bit of time and I do need a haircut right now. <laughs> uh, but it's been about two weeks, I haven't really gotten around to doing anything, you know, uh, since like the last time I recorded. But I'm finally ready to, you know, pour the concrete into the hole and then we'll start setting the anchor bolts. So let me show you what the concrete looks like and then I'll resume the video probably when I'm setting the anchor bolts in there. All right, so once again, I'm going to make the disclaimer. So we got the hole there, the concrete there. I'm going to make the disclaimer that I am not like an expert in this, but from what I've gathered, working the little bit of, you know, helping out that I have in construction, you know, you don't want your concrete to be too wet, but, you know, obviously you want it to be fully, um, you know, mixed well so this is you know probably a good mixture now so anyway again i'm using about 10 bags like 10 60 pound bags should fill this hole we'll see how it goes um and then again there's the little anchor template that we saw um last time i recorded so let me start uh pouring this and we'll uh kind of resume when uh I'm setting that guy into the concrete. One thing that I forgot to mention um, is that, as you can see, so I've done this in the past and I did this this time for sure. As you can see, so my hole, it kind of goes, you know, essentially straight down, right, and then it kind of mushrooms down, you know, kind of in there. That kind of helps to anchor your whole, you know, mass of concrete so it's not shifting around. Uh, so, you know, I would recommend doing that. That is a pretty good idea. Uh, the other thing too is, um, you know, like especially on the sides here, if you already disturb the soil, right, don't like try to like you know like put it back or whatever you want completely undisturbed soil especially on the sides like if you disturb it on the bottom a little bit it won't really matter because the concrete will kind of you know push it down uh, so that's fine you know just kind of press it down with your foot and then you're probably you'll probably be fine but your sides i mean this is all like essentially rock you know rock solid so you do not want disturbed soil on your sides because that'll really kind of you know let your uh you know essentially pure anchor you know move around what you do not want all right guys so here's where we're at i've got the hole filled with uh cement and uh, so here it looks like it's kind of not filled right but my lot is at a slope here so if you look at here i'm basically at the level of the grass um, I'm definitely not going to fill it anymore in fact i'm almost thinking about taking a bit out because um I actually want to be able to, uh, you know, if I ever have to remove this, right, I want to be able to just cut the anchor bolts off and just put some grass over this and not really have to worry about, you know, taking off uh, this huge mass of uh, concrete out of the ground. Um, so anyway, eh, I'll probably just leave it like this. I mean, worst case scenario, if I have to do that, I'll just bust up, like, you know, a little bit of it. You know, kind of get it down a little bit and then just put some dirt and some grass over it. Although I, def I doubt that that'll be an issue. So anyhow, last time I did this, what I just did is, um, I just basically set this in, right? I just pushed it down and I was able to go in. But again, last time I didn't have rebar, so we'll see kind of how that works. Um, and again, so... It's kind of faint because I did this a while ago already. So you could see my um, 
uh, line that points to north, right? So you do want to align this um, with however your pier is going to align with north, right? Uh, so make sure that you do that. Don't just, you know, orient this whichever way. Um, you can do that and it will work, or you can make it work, but it won't be pretty, you know, chances are. Unless you have a round pier, then it really doesn't matter. If you have a square pier, I would orient it, you know, with north, you know, some logical way, right? And, you know, later on as we kind of keep on going, you'll see how, what my logical way is, I guess. <laughs> so now let me, let me repos re reposition the camera here and we'll start setting this sucker in. Okay, so I'm pointed pretty well along this line this way I'm gonna check I've got another line going out the other way I'm gonna check along that line okay and I'm gonna start pushing so hopefully this works All right, success story. So, um, yeah, we got there. We got that thing under. The only thing I forgot to bring is the level, so I'm gonna go get that. I'm gonna check level. I'm gonna check that I'm pointed the right way, and then we're good to roll. Go. We'll just let it set, and that's it. You know. All right. So I got this long level. I'm actually not using this to level. I'm just kind of aligning this with the bolts, right? And I'm checking to see if I'm kind of pointing the right direction as far as north-south goes. Um, actually, let me step away and kind of take a look from further away. Yeah, it looks like I'm kind of off, so I'm gonna try to adjust a little bit here. I can. Oh yeah, that's, that's moving pretty easily. Actually, still. Okay, and I'm you know kind of wiggling around so that the concrete has a chance to settle around this, and there isn't any cavities around the bolts. It's pretty fluid still, so it should be just fine. I guess I'm realigning with the centers of the bolts and you know this doesn't have to be exactly accurate but i figured the closer the better and right now yeah i'm looking pretty good i'm gonna go just a little more and i'll call it groovy okay okay so Fairly sure I'm good there, but I'll give one more check. Yeah. Okay, so good there. That looks great. Um, and then I'm, now I'm going to start checking level with this little level. And I'm just going to put it straight on the plywood. So it looks like I need to go down here. Decent them out. Pretty close. And then is already pretty close. Okay, yeah, so we're good to go. Now, um, I will, you know, like, I guess kind of point out one thing. Now, this thing doesn't have to be, like, perfectly level or anything like that. You just don't want it to be totally lopsided. Because what you're going to do is you're actually going to level the pier um, with your, you know, anchoring bolts. And this, you know, the uh, the plywood right now is kind of acting as a spacer to give you enough, essentially, range to level the, you know, the pier out. So if you have the plywood piece relatively level, you could get the rest of the level very easily uh, with these bolts. 
and then um, usually you'll have the top of your pier and then the pier play and then you'll actually do the very final level of the telescope mount itself with those bolts so there's actually like two you know essentially levels that you, you know you, you still have access to but i mean you definitely don't want this thing to be like you know like at a really big you know steep angle or anything like that you want the bolts to be you know relatively level with the ground basically or not with the ground at level you know with the earth i guess <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll let this set, and uh, yeah, we'll get to installing the, um, basically, at the bottom of the observatory itself. Um, after I mow the lawn, probably not today, I'm gonna just let this set so I don't, like, mess this up or anything like that. So I'm, you know, setting up the next step, basically. See you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so, basically I'm getting ready to install the base, um, and, you know, so this again, this observatory was already pre-built, um, uh, but basically, you know, I mean, you obviously want to make sure that it's level, which is kind of what I'm working on right now. I'm putting it on these little concrete pillars, that's what I had it sitting on before. Uh, my other law was a lot more level than this, so this time I'm going to have to kind of work on leveling it out a lot more. Uh, but actually, you know, before I kind of conclude this segment, let me kind of flip this over and show you guys what this looks like on the bottom here. Just see, kind of see how I constructed it. My, you know, my observatory, it's a 6x6, six six. it's incredibly small, so, you know pretty pretty standard you know um yeah so this works just fine for a small one again i'm not like a construction person so if you know if you're building a bigger building by all look into it uh for a smaller one this works just fine you know so i've got uh basically what you know just two you know two by fours that are essentially supporting the floor i do have hangers on those and then these runners i don't have hangers on um you know and this has worked just fine i mean i haven't had any issues with this at all so that the only thing that i would probably change uh and i still may is uh put uh pressure treated uh plywood there although this seems to be holding up just fine it's already been three years you know it looks looks fine so anyhow yeah i'll see you guys in the next section where we start putting in the walls and i'll kind of show you how i frame the walls all right so this kind of concludes the uh install of the flooring so basically it's all level the pier is in you know not not too much to say here i mean besides you know just make sure that the that everything is basically level you know you bolt the pier down uh level it as well of course as best you can it doesn't have to be perfectly level because you know you're gonna use your top plate right to do the final leveling but you know make it as level as possible and then yeah we're about to start putting in the walls all right guys so um me and my cousin here, we're starting to do the, um, basically putting up the walls. And, uh, so I've shown this in my video about the observatory, but basically, you know, it's a pretty standard, you know, framing for a shed. So you got two by fours, and then this is just siding, you know, that's kind of like the shed type of siding that goes on it. So nothing too complicated there. Um, as far as, you know, the sliding mechanism for the roof, right? So I've got one side that has just flat. Actually, I put some aluminum plates so that the wood doesn't, you know, get like all banged up by the uh, metal wheels. Um, and then I've got a, another second uh, two by four that's actually supported by the siding kind of uh you know that i just added for rigidity purposes really one for my little roof would be just fine um but anyway yeah that's all there is to it and on the other side you do want to put a v-channel um and you do not want to put a v-channel on both the sides so the reason for that is because especially as the observatory ages you're never gonna have them perfectly parallel, right? And if they're not perfectly parallel, you're just gonna have binding issues, you know, when the roof kind of slides off. Uh, one V channel is perfectly good enough to, you know, basically hold it on track, it's not gonna go anywhere. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. 
that's kind of what the um, panels look like. We're about to install the front one, and you know, essentially at that point, since my roof is already constructed, it's out there in front of the house, kind of on my driveway. Uh, we're just you know going to slide it on, and that's all there is to it. All right, all right, guys. So the observatory is finally operational. Um, it took like literally three months to do this just because I had so much stuff going on this summer. But um, so I've got it all together. I've got it all painted. And last night I finally, finally had a chance to test it out. So here's the rig that I was running. It's the FSQ 106. Um, I, you know, I did this rig to do a polar alignment and thankfully my method for, you know, aligning the pier was, you know, like almost spot on. In fact, let me show you guys. So I'm like, you know, adjustment wise, like kind of right almost in the middle. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, polar alignment went real well. Uh, mount so far seems stable. Um, and yeah, let's take a walk around the build and kind of see what it looks like, basically. So this is the new paint job. And um, as you can see, I've got a solar panel here. Um, I'm thinking of mounting solar panels on this side of the observatory, because this is kind of like the sun side. Um, since the house is, I don't know, roughly a hundred feet away, it's, you know, kind of expensive to run power to it, and I'd kind of prefer to do solar anyway, if I could, you know, if I could do it. But yeah, paint job is done to match the house, um, and so far, you know, it's working perfectly fine in the new location with night, one night under the belt. So anyhow, I just wanted to make this quick video uh, for you guys that are maybe thinking about doing an observatory. Hopefully this gives you some tips, you know, some stuff to help you out. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.